Hey, my name is Nick Valeski with USU Extension's Integrated Pest Management Program, and I work as the Vegetable IPM Associate. And my name is Zach Shum, and I am the Arthropod Diagnostician and Urban Integrated Pest Management Associate for Utah State University Extension. So right now it's early July, and we are at a community garden site in Logan, Utah. And we're gonna be looking for grasshoppers. Grasshoppers are one of the most problematic, conspicuous insects that we have here in Utah. They're a huge problem in our pastures, our small grain crops, and even our home landscapes. So in this video, Zach and I are gonna talk about the biology, how to monitor for them, and what we can do to manage them. So there are hundreds of species of grasshoppers in North America and even more throughout the world. Luckily, grasshoppers are very easy to identify. They look like a large hopping insect. And we know that it's a hopping insect because it has a very large thickened femur, which has a lot of musculature that, they, that aids them in jumping. And then on the end of that, they have a tibia, just like humans, a femur that's very thick and larger, and then a tibia that's a little bit thinner. So grasshoppers, there are other insects that appear to be like grasshoppers that you might confuse for grasshoppers. What you can do is you can look at the length of the femur in relation to the length of the abdomen. So there are some other insects like katydids that have very, very large and elongate femurs that extend well beyond the length of the abdomen. However, grasshoppers, the femur never extends past the length of the abdomen. So that is how you can differentiate between grasshoppers and some other large hopping insects that we can find in Utah. There are three major groups of grasshoppers that we find in Utah, the ones that are typically damaging our crops and our plants. One are the spur-throated grasshoppers. These grasshoppers are large and robust. On their prosternum, which is the underside of their thorax, between the front legs, there is a conspicuous spine present that is used to identify them. The next large group are the bandwing grasshoppers. Their face is mostly vertical, facing up and down. They don't have much curvature to their face, but there is a lot of variation here. Their wings always reach the tip of the abdomen as adults, but many species have wings that extend far past the abdomen. When seen jumping and flying, the hind wings are usually colored. They can be different colors such as black, red, or variations. They also tend to make noise when in flight. The third group are the slant-faced grasshoppers. As the name would suggest, these faces are very slanted and typically point front to back, where the mouth is pointing towards the back end of their body. Otherwise, their features are quite variable. There are over 400 species of grasshoppers found in the western states of the United States. Most of the grasshoppers that are major crop pests, at least in Utah, are spur-throated grasshoppers, but other types of grasshoppers can feed on crops as well. There are four species in particular that are very common in Utah. The first one is the two-striped grasshopper. These can be major pests on small grains, alfalfa, and corn. It is an early emerging species, with the eggs hatching in early spring and adults appearing in the early summer. Adults are easy to identify, as they have two distinct yellow stripes on their pro pronotum and extending down the wings. The second species of grasshopper that is a major pest in Utah is the differential grasshopper. This species feeds on weeds, grasses, fruits, and vegetables, so it has a very wide host range. Eggs hatch in the late spring, and adults emerge early to midsummer, as they develop quickly after their late hatching period due to warmer conditions. Overall, this species is yellow to tan with black markings and has conspicuous black chevron markings on the enlarged femur. The third species that is a major crop pest and plant pest in Utah is the red-legged grasshopper. These can feed on forbs, meadows, crop borders, and roadside plants. Eggs hatch about three weeks after the two-striped grasshopper, which again emerges in the early spring, and adults of these are present in the late summer to mid-fall. Adults have a bright yellow underside and characteristically have a bright red hind tibia. The fourth species that is a major crop pest in Utah and is also the most devastating species of grasshopper in the United States is the migratory grasshopper. The migratory grasshopper can feed on forbs, grasslands, and meadows, but is also the most destructive grasshopper in the U.S. to alfalfa, grains, clover, corn, and other vegetables. This species hatches in early spring and development to adulthood can take as little as 35 days. Swarming and mass movements can occur on any days above 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Adults are fairly nondescript, but overall they are tan to yellow with slightly darker wings. The hind femur are dark brown with lighter brown chevron markings. Next, we're going to discuss the general life cycle of grasshoppers. Most grasshoppers in Utah experience one generation per year, meaning that there is one cycle from nymph to adult throughout one specific year. These eggs are typically laid in the summer months and 
and fall, and the nymphs emerge the following spring. As soon as these eggs are laid in the soil, they begin to develop. Once winter hits, the development stops and then finishes in the following spring. These eggs are laid in the soil in and nearby their appropriate habitats. They are small, ovular, and can be laid in groups or dispersed throughout the soil singly. Nymph grasshoppers look just like adults, except they are smaller and do not have fully formed wings. There are usually five nymphal stages before the grasshopper reaches adulthood. As the nymph stages grow and as they molt, you can typically see wing buds start to develop, but nymphs never have fully formed wings. Adults, however, do have fully formed wings. So if you see a grasshopper that has wings that extend towards to the abdomen tip or extending past the abdomen, you are most likely looking at an adult grasshopper. Otherwise, they look just like the nymphal stages. Adults are the only stage that are capable of reproducing and also have a higher capacity for movement, although nymphs also, in some cases, have a high capacity for movement as well. There are many climactic and weather conditions that impact grasshopper populations on a yearly basis. The first thing to note is that really cold winters are very unlikely to completely demolish grasshopper populations for the following year. Eggs are very freeze tolerant, and with additional snowpack that we experience in Utah, it helps to insulate the eggs for the winter months. So it's very unlikely that a very cold winter would kill a lot of the grasshopper populations for the following year. In the spring, warm conditions and dry conditions can assist grasshopper populations and help them explode or help outbreaks. Cool and wet conditions, anytime those are experienced in the landscape, can help hamper populations of grasshoppers and lower their numbers. This is because cool and wet conditions can allow for their parasites, their predators, and fungal pathogens to impact their populations and to survive and reproduce a little bit better. If you have any questions about identifying grasshoppers or questions about grasshopper behavior or biology, feel free to contact the Utah Plant Pest Diagnostic Lab. If you guys have additional questions, you can also contact your USU Extension County office near you.